Eric Young and Matt Hall inside of Davis Wade Stadium here in Starkville, Mississippi. After Kansas State beats number 23 Mississippi State 31 to 24 to move to 3-0 in the season. A quick note, we're recording this at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. It's got to be 110 here on the field, so if I sweat a lot, it just is what it is. Derek Young, though, K-State had to sweat it out today, of course. The Wildcats trailed by seven in the fourth quarter. We're going to go through drive-by-drive drive here in segment one of the KSO Sunday Show, which is brought to you by People's State Bank and Legacy Insurance. But, Derek, the point was K-State had to sweat it out a little bit. They did come back and win late. Just a wonderful win for Chris Kleiman in this program in his third game as Kansas State's head coach. Absolutely, and I like the pun of sweating it out. That's a really good one proud of on it. a day like this. Uh, both teams probably squandered opportunities throughout the game uh, on both sides of the ball, especially special teams for Kansas State, but this will be probably, a, they're going to use this as a launching pad. Chris Kleiman and his program, uh, they're going on the bye week. Uh, next week they'll be recruiting, and they're going to use this as a reason why others should invest and believe in this program. No doubt about it. We're going to take you now drive by drive, at least scoring drives for both teams as Grant Flanders plays highlights behind us. K-State today wins, like I said, 31-24 to over Mississippi State here in Starkville. The first points, Derek, came on a Blake Lynch field goal from 35 yards out with 2.23 left in the first quarter. K-State went nine plays, 36 yards, 4.05, and went up 3 nothing. Before talking about just that drive, Derek, K-State had a drive before that, too, their first drive of the game where they moved the ball deep into Mississippi State territory, got stopped on a fourth and one that you and I both agreed with the play call and going for it. I was concerned after the first quarter when it's 3 enough after those two drives that K-State hadn't built a big enough edge despite outplaying Mississippi State significantly in that first quarter. Yeah, the reason why they were outplaying them is because they were controlling both sides of the line of scrimmage. It was a complete 180 from what we saw a year ago inside Bill Snyder Family Stadium. And for Kansas State, you, you have to like the fact that you put po uh, points on the board first, especially after last year's game. And that fourth and one call, we, we talked about it together you know, in, in the press box. And I certainly think there's probably room for uh, were they a little too conservative with the play call kind of looked like more of a standard run than anything but the way the offensive alignment was just right the, moving the line of scrimmage I think there was more than enough reason to have faith that they could get enough push uh, to convert on that fourth down I felt the same way obviously they could have tried something else and had it work better but that's the identity they're trying to establish here at Kansas State I thought it was a good call and it just didn't work out for him but it was three nothing with 223 left to play in the first quarter K-State led here in Starkville the Wildcats didn't wait long to score again about three minutes later 1331 left in the second quarter Jordan Brown has about a 20-yard run to put K-State in scoring position, then from seven yards out scores to put K-State up 10-0. That was five plays, 55 yards, 246. At this point, it's 10-0 K-State. We'll get to Mississippi State's next score here in a second, but first, the Wildcats drive there was big, Derek, and then K-State had opportunities to make it even worse than 10-0 before the Bulldogs got back in the contest. Yeah, because they would get another stop right after going up 10-0, but it couldn't grab the ball because of a muff punt, which was kind of a trend throughout the day. But you have to like, again, two possession lead. Things are Everything's going their way. Still controlling the line of scrimmage even at that point. Uh, and they just weren't playing flawlessly on offense, but they were moving the ball right. just, just enough uh, to believe that the running game was going to be a constant throughout the game. The play action started to open up a lot. And we did start to see uh, more running back uh, rotation at that point. We had seen James Gilbert, I think, solely up until that point, but Jordan Brown started to get on the field. They're doing some field work behind us. I'm sure you can't hear it, and if you can, I do I do apologize. But K-State, like you said, up 10-0, has a chance to go up even more. They're going to start at midfield, but Jordan Brown can't handle a, a punt that was probably deflected. I think K-State deflected two punts, which usually is a good thing, but I think it made it a little bit tricky for the return men. So instead of having a chance to go up more than 10 nothing, we see Mississippi State get on the board the first time. Tommy Stevens, who really struggled today, he missed every throw really, really high before they benched him, uh, does score from a yard out. They go nine plays, excuse me, two yards out. They go nine plays, 51 yards in five minutes after that muff punt to make it 10-7. So at that point, Derek, Mississippi State's back in the game, and K-State feels like it's got a missed opportunity. Yeah, missed opportunity, had a chance to go up three possessions, and not only that, and when I say three possessions, it's because they were going to get the ball at midfield. The muff punt happened right around the 50-yard line, so they were going to get the ball in a position where, you know, all the momentum was on the offensive side at that point, and now they get to operate on an even shorter field than they had in the two previous drives. So it looked like everything was going well until that muff punt. They give up uh, the scoring drive there, and I'll be honest, even the defense, that scoring drive that they gave up, I thought played fairly well. Yeah. Uh, most of the uh, conversions uh, – uh, whether it be in short yardage situations or whatever, we're kind of on broken plays that Tommy Stevens just really used his legs to create. No doubt about it. That was a play that still took nine plays to go to the 50 yards. They had not they had not converted a third down before that play, uh, before that drive Mississippi State, and they wouldn't have if not for the muff punt. So they do again go nine plays, 51 yards, but K-State uh, gets a break it's of itself. I think it's fair if you're a K-State fan to say the Wildcats had their fair share of, of unfortunate events today. 
two muff punts, of course, intercepting, a, uh, excuse me, having an interception by A.J. Parker, then fumbled and recovered Mississippi State. So I think K-State was somewhat unlucky today, but they do get a break when Tommy Stevens just drops the ball with no defender touch him and run down the field. K-State gets the ball at the 30. It takes just five plays to score on a Skylar Thompson one-yard touchdown. And Derek, for everything you can imagine, it sure looks like it'll be 17-7 going into the half as there was just 46 seconds left when Skylar Thompson scored from a yard out. Yeah, and I remember telling you that before that, uh, right after they scored that touchdown, all they had to do was, you know, not give up the big play. Even three points wasn't wasn't terrible in that situation. Just don't give up the big play. And you go up, you know, up one possession or it would have been 17 to 10 or 17 to 7. Right. And you get the ball first coming out of halftime, which is also important why you have, you can't let the big play. And unfortunately, that, that is what they're about to do going up 17 to 7 and uh, 46 seconds left. The Mississippi State shouldn't have been able to score. Absolutely not. So you're looking at a 17-7 game like you said. You should be in good shape. K-State has not really faced adversity still all year. For the first two games, they do have a muff punt in this game, but they're up 17-7 on the road. Like you said, they get the ball first, but out of half, things are great. Then you do give up a four-play, 66-yard touchdown drive that took just 31 seconds. Tommy Stevens made his best throw of the day by far to a Cyrus Mitchell, who uh, had a really nice day for them. It was a tough matchup for K-State at six foot five. That put it made it 17-14 at halftime. Skylar Thompson doesn't take the last snap of the first half when they go to a knee. Nick Oss does. Skylar Thompson is actually dealing with cramping in his hand, not the dislocated or injured thumb that we perhaps thought it was. But K-State's up just 17 14 at halftime kind of like Derek talked about not in the same control you would have thought and then things get worse in the third quarter Mississippi State switches quarterbacks on the first drive they do Garrett Schrader leads a 12 play 79 yard touchdown drive to Mississippi State up 21 17 with 447 left in the third quarter I thought things felt rough for K-State here but the defense for the Wildcats was fantastic the rest of the way yeah and when they give up the 17-7 lead to go only up 17 14 right in a half that's, that's a ball or, or a possession, at least where you tell the safeties, we can't allow anything deep. Uh, that's what you're ultimately trying to prevent in that situation. The number one thing they tried to prevent is the number one thing they tried to allow. So Mississippi State goes into halftime with the momentum. Uh, there's some you know uncertainty what Skylar Thompson's availability and status right. is going to be. Fortunately, he's okay. But Mississippi State takes that momentum out of halftime, keeps it going, scores, takes the first lead of the game. And like you said, Kansas State at that point, their defense uh, really put the, put the game on their back, on their shoulders, and they were there for it because they were on the field for the, almost the entire third quarter. And you think about things that happened to that defense even after this. You have a second you know, muffed punt when Seth Porter comes up to try to field a punt that I think he must have expected was touched by a player at some point. Another the way he, the way he attacked Mani. another blocked or tipped punt at least. Uh, nothing really happens there, but then you have another another bad break. Like you said earlier, A.J. Parker gets an interception on another high ball from Tommy Stevens, returns it down deep, doesn't get anything out of it, though, unfortunately, because he fumbles it. But when K-State Stevens got put back in a bad spot again in the fourth quarter, they held Mississippi State to just a six-play, 26-yard drive and a 47-yard field goal. So you're down 24-17 at that point, Derek, but the defense again keeps K-State just one score down, and I think that was key for the Wildcats' morale probably going forward. The scramble ability by this defense today was just tremendous. It's not something that I've seen from Kansas State since we've covered the team since the existence of KSO, actually. Uh, but a couple of deep games last year, I think they were pretty good on third down, but, but just not on a consistent level this year. I think at we did the stat before we started airing. I think their teams are only converting five third downs on 31 right. attempts through three games. And going into today, that was number one in the country. So it's probably going to have a chance to remain one of the country yep. or number one in the country. That's allowed Kansas State to not only you know get off the field in a timely manner, but that's why they've been able to control the time of possession, make the other team's defense really tired. Unfortunately, that script was flipped, and Kansas State's defense is the one where I thought would probably be gassed. So did I. Because I think they were on the field for over 10 minutes in the third quarter. But the funny thing is, even though they were on the field, they are the ones that had the reason to be gassed. They are the ones that kept coming up with the huge plays to win this game. And A.J. Parker's interception would have been that, but I don't fault a guy for trying to make no. a big play, and I don't think Chris Kleiman will either. No, he doesn't seem to at the postgame at all. I think you're right. So it's 24-17 Mississippi State. K-State's defense is gassed at this point. You have to at least believe. They're not playing like it, but you have to think they're physically fatigued. And I'll be darned if they don't get put right back on the field, but at least it's for a good reason because Malik Knowles takes the ensuing kickoff 100 yards for a touchdown. 
to tie it 24-24. Malik Knowles even admitted in the postgame he was considering taking that to a knee when he caught it. Fortunately, he didn't because I'm not, I'm not sure anyone touched him. And that was the play of the game. There's more to talk about, of course, after that. But that was absolutely necessary for K-State to get back in that game. Ties it up 24-24, still 14-36 left to play in the fourth quarter, D.Y. Yeah, it was the tying touchdown. And it was one where I, I thought that he was going to accidentally come out of the end zone. I'm not sure he was actually right. prepared. And I think that hesitation might have ultimately is what you know confused Mississippi State a little bit and probably caused the creases that he had to run through to open up uh, and it, it, for, for Knowles to run that back. So we're, we're just sitting there at the tied game. Uh, the defense playing really well. Uh, it, obviously, we think they're gassed, but it was interesting. I think they made some substitutions because of that. And even at the end of the third quarter, beginning of the fourth quarter, so guys that hadn't played in the first half at all started to play. Darrell Patterson came in for Kiviyama McGee. Yep. McGee had a great game. It was just more about fatigue. Darrell Patterson came in. No big mistakes for him. He actually had a good pass deflection in the end zone on a long pass from Garrett Schrader, I believe. Right. Eli Huggins came into the game in the fourth quarter, a defensive tackle. Defensive linemen obviously are going to be fatigued, and, and they're down a man with Wyatt Huber not playing today. So, And Eli Huggins, who's probably one of the most unsung heroes this year because when he, he's gotten in and he hasn't had a whole lot of first – team opportunities he did today he's played great every time he's gone in I mean we talked about this before the game Derek not to break off too much before we finish this game but you looked at one point in the fourth quarter and I think you said to me there's seven reserves on the field out of the 11 if you look at it of course no White Hubert to begin with no Walter Neal to begin with Justin Hughes out for the season that's three starters already out and they got nicked up like you said but the reserves played well and that's something Chris Kleiman really tried to build so far we'll talk about that some more in the last segment let's wrap up segment one here at least looking at the last score of the game which was the biggest one K-State scores on a 15-yard touchdown pass from Skylar Thompson to Dalton, shown on a play action, beautifully executed, a nice play call from Courtney Messingham. K-State goes up 31-24 with 537 left, and that would be the final score, Derek Young. Yeah, the finish of this game was actually pretty, uh, you know, reflective of, of how North Dakota State inched out close games uh, under Kleiman themselves. So I think it was, it was a very Chris Kleiman finish if you look at his career and what he's been able to do as a head coach. They like to grind the ball out at the end, take, you know, tie the game up, you know, and a uh, long possession to get a score, and you really limit the possessions for the other team, and then you run out the clock, really, and give the, uh, the opponent no, no time to really score themselves. That wraps up segment one for us of the KSO Sunday Show, presented by People State Bank and Legacy Insurance. We'll come back here in seg excuse me, segment two to hear from the Wildcats and their head coach, Chris Kleiman. I mean, I think a lot's changed, honestly. Um, obviously, the whole new coaching staff coming in, I think they've been awesome. But I think, you know, the mindset on the team's a little bit changed. I think this team is really close on and off the field. So I think that's been huge, you know, especially with how we dealt with adversity today. You know, I think we had some plays that would, like, really hurt, hurt us and they were really detrimental. But we just came closer from that and we battled through and overcame that. You know, to overcome a seven-point deficit in the fourth is huge um, on the road. That's really tough. Um, so I think it's just guys loving each other, playing for each other, people getting excited, people make big plays, all of that. Matt Hall of Case Online back inside of Davis Wade Stadium for segment two of the KSO Sunday Show, which is brought to you by People's State Bank and Legacy Insurance. Last week, we let Skylar Thompson close out the Sunday show. This week, another new thing. Skylar Thompson spoke a lot to the media today after this game. He was very insightful. So just watch Skylar Thompson speak to the media after K-State's 31-24 win over Mississippi State. I guess let's start with the touchdown, of course. You guys were staying patient, still running the football, still trying to set up play action, and then you found Dalton Schoen. Yeah. Uh, how hard was it not to just get excited and throw the ball so fast as soon as you saw him? Uh, honestly, those are the hardest throws. Um, he was so wide open. That's why I put some air and made just um, made sure that he, he gave him a chance to catch it. You know, I felt like I missed another wide open one beginning of the game. They got a rough and passer call, but same one with Blaze. It was just like it was so wide open. I kind of just pushed the ball and aimed it and just overthrew it a little bit. But man, I I I'm I didn't lost. I'm a lost the words. Um, walking off that. I mean. It was just amazing to, to be around some of the guys that that I've been with through this through this program um, that are in my grade, Denzel Goolsby and Trey Deshaun, Reggie Walker, that senior class. Just I I was talking at the hotel last night and I was my main message was like I'm tired of people dis disrespecting us and not giving us the respect that you know we deserve. And but in saying that, we have to go earn it. We've had three non-con games in Power Five conferences the past three years and lost, yeah. and have lost by a good margin. And I was, I was, like, it's time to to put Kansas State back on the map. And I feel like this is, was a great opportunity for us. And I knew 
I had so much confidence going into this game that we could win. I believed, our whole team believed. Um, whenever we were down, we faced some adversity, had some turnovers on some special teams, and just some things not going our way. Nobody panicked. Nobody panicked. We rallied together. We came together as one. Um, played for one another, and it didn't matter. We knew we were going to win. Like, that's, that was our mindset. And it was led by Coach Kleinman. Um, he told us on Monday we're going to go beat this team, and nobody gives us a chance. Nobody's, you know, talking about. Come from North Dakota State. Have you guys ever coached on this type of level before? All this, like, this stuff is just white noise, you know. And we knew that we just got to, we needed to have a great week of practice and come out here and execute. And I feel like for the most part, we did today. Um, we were kind of there in the second half, not on the field very often. We had a three and out, and they had a long drive that went and scored. Um, but like I said, I'm just so proud of this team. I'm so proud of this team. It was so awesome to um, to get a win for these seniors. I know how much it meant to guys like Reggie Walker and um, Tyler Mitchell, guys that are from this area, having so much family in town. Um, and I was I was playing for those guys, playing for those guys, and. Oh man, I'm just I'm thankful. I'm so so thankful and blessed. It came a long way. It came a long way, and I know this um, this this is just the beginning. Um, I'm not satisfied. The team's not satisfied. We're hungry for more. We're gonna rest up on this bye week um, and get better. And we're gonna go into Big 12 play with a lot of confidence and um, just continue to play K-State football. I think we've established our our mojo of what we're what uh, you know what what we're gonna do our identity and how we're gonna run things. And um, we just gotta stick to that, stick to that and trust one another. I think the best thing about this football team is that there's no self, there's no selfish players on this team. Nobody nobody cares about the individual stuff. We just wanna win. And um, yeah, we've, we've lacked that in ways the past couple of years. So I'm, I'm just so thankful, so thankful and blessed. Uh, this is one of the most fun games I've had. Um, and you know, after the, the end of the Bowling Green game last last week on the in the fourth quarter, I I got in there with the old line and the running backs, and it was just like, man, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go in a dog fight with somebody. Like I'm I'm tired of beating teams like this, and not playing a full game. I'm ready to go go fight and go battle with somebody. Um, so we were there in the fourth quarter. Um, we were down. Um, and we had that kick return, um, and I just got in the huddle and told those guys like, this is this is what we've worked for. This is what you guys have worked for your whole life for opportunities like this. Um, this is the time where we go shine. This is time where it's, it all pays off. And I know that we've worked harder than the people across from us. I know that we've sacrificed more. We've 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 been through so much. Like it's, it's time to go make all this worth it. And. Everybody just rallied together and told each other we loved each other, and we went and we went and fought for each other, and that's the one of the best moments I've had playing football my entire life. Um, you can tell how much everybody loves each other and wants to, wants to go win for each other. Yeah, that one. a lot about football team. Coach had mentioned you were fighting through some cramps and it looked like like on that sneak, did something happen to your hand on that sneak too that you had to fight through? Yeah, so it was really weird. So I was carrying the ball and my hand started cramping. Um, my thumb was stuck, so I was trying to get it out. So it's happened to me before. I don't know why, but I started cramping in my hand and then my lats, my back, my hamstrings, my calves. I started getting full body cramps. So I, I got an IV at half um, and that led me to being nauseous. I felt honestly terrible <laughs> um, in the third quarter um, and was, was hurting, but I knew this team needed me. I knew I, I could get through it. I just needed to let the, the IV settle in, in, in me a little bit. Um, so I felt, I felt great in the fourth quarter. Um, there was no, nothing taking me out of this game. Um, and I was, uh, you know, I'm glad it was, wasn't nothing serious. I know some people probably thought I'd pop my thumb back in place or something, but maybe that's what I should tell people. Um, but, but no, I'm, I'm all good. Nick, Nick Litter's had, had a drop. Oh, you like Kelsey. I don't know if you, if you got asked this already, I just think that we showed that that we can hang with anybody. Um, um, you know, they were they were bigger, probably faster and stronger than us. Um, but we we established the run game um, early on, um, and to show um, we we can play with anybody. I truly believe that, and we've all believed that. Um, it was just time to go show the world and um, the country what, what we could do and that we could do that. And um, it was just so much fun to go out there today and just play play for my teammates and play for these coaches and the, uh, this K-State community um, and fan base. Uh, 
think that's, that's what it came down to. We knew um, coming down in here that it was going to be about us, and we were going to go in 65,000, and, and it was going to be it was going to come down to us and it, how we how we stuck together and played together and uh, played for one another. And I was just so proud of this team and how we did that. Um, we faced some adversity today for the first time this season, but I knew that was coming. Uh, this team knew that was coming, and we just we stuck together and kept playing for one another. And it was just so much fun, so much fun. And I, I just think that, you know, I told the guys in the, I was kind of talking about this earlier, but I told the guys in the hotel last night, it's time to put K-State back on the map. I'm, I'm tired of um, uh, people, you know, not giving us respect and, and whatnot, but in saying that, uh, we haven't earned it. You know, like, we're tired of it. We're tired of people saying we're, you know, this and that. Like, we're not physical enough. We're not big enough. We're not fast enough. We don't have the players. We don't have the coach. Like, but then again, they have the right to say that because we never, we never have, have proved ourselves to, to, for them to say anything different. And um, I was just, I was so mentally prepared and, and ready to go fight today. Um, I was in, you know, going to give it my all and, and play, play for, play for my teammates, play for the, my coaches, and just trust my prep, preparation and just go be myself. And I did that today, and I think it paid off. And we got a win. And the the great thing is that this is just the beginning. Uh, we left a lot out of the field today. Um, had some turnovers on special teams. Um, you know, AJ's uh, pick and you know turned that over. It was just a lot of a lot of things that you know didn't go our way necessarily. So um, it was good to see our team fight through that and, and stick together. Um, and now we got we got some momentum going in the Big 12 play, and I think that's huge. Um, we got another road game coming up against Oklahoma State, who's a great football team. Um, and it's just going to be about us these next couple of weeks and just getting getting better, getting healthy. Um, and just not being satisfied. What are your memories of Malik Knowles' kick return? Like, where were you when you saw it? How did you react? What did you say? Like, just try to remember that play and walk me through what all happened there. Yeah, well, we were just in need of a we were we were in need of some momentum of some type. Right. We needed we needed a big play. We needed to go score. Um, that was a huge possession of the game. Um, so whenever he got loose into that first line, I mean, I was just yelling, <laughs> just yelling for him to go. I thought he was going to get caught there for a second, just from my angle that I was at. Um, and then he pulled away and kept going and scored. It was huge. It was huge. And he just, um, the credit goes to, uh, to those guys on the kickoff return team. I mean, the hole was huge and they blocked and made great adjustments. Um, and Malik saw the hole and hit it hard. And, oh man, that's, that's the, it's just fun stuff, man. It's just so fun. Um, I was so happy for Malik making a play. You know, that's, that's who he is. He, he's a, he's a, um, He's a good player, and the sky's the limit. Still, you know, he's, he's just gonna get better. Just gotta keep, keep, keeping him, you know, confident and um, working with him to get better. The whole receiving core. I feel like I was, you know, I've said it time and time again. I'm so proud how we did not, have, we had things not go our way today, right? Um, and we stuck together. There was no point finger, no nothing, and we stuck together. And that, that's that's what um, great teams do. Um, and we're still we're still growing and and molding together. Like that's what's awesome. It just, it's game three. We're still early on in the season, but uh, it feels great to be three and zero. I tell you that. It feels a lot better than last year. Going home sick. Man, I just didn't I didn't play and we lost. Right. So this year we kind of I kind of me myself took it personal that I wasn't gonna lose. So. Through three weeks, uh, a group of guys that believe in each other, a group of guys that love each other, a group of guys that uh, will go battle for each other, uh, and a group of guys that stick with each other when adversity strikes. I mean, I didn't know like like what it was going to be like coming to the season, but I know we put we put in the work from um, the time I got here in January to now, and I'm not like nothing is like surprising because we put in the work in the off season, we study extra film, and we all got together as players and coaches, and we knew what we had to do, and we get the results we want. Just happy that they were able to go on the road and get a really tough victory. We knew that this was going to be a four-quarter affair. We knew that this was going to be a difficult thing. And I, I'm a big believer in whatever we did last week has no bearing on the next week. Whatever we do this week, we're going to enjoy it. It's got a, no bearing on next week. Thank God we don't play so that we can get our chance to get some guys healthy. But it's not going to have any bearing on what our next game is at Oklahoma State. And it's 12 one-week seasons, guys. And uh, we've played three of them right now. And I said to you guys last week, and we better not fall in love with ourselves. We've got a long ways to go. we got a lot of work to do, uh, but the guys believe, and the and the guys are 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 
understanding our routine so much better. They know what to expect on a Monday practice. They know what to expect on a Thursday practice. They know what to expect at a pregame meal. Those are the things that we're trying to get going so that the guys feel comfortable to just cut it loose on Saturday and have a blast with their brothers. You know, I, I said this to, to Wyatt up there. It, it's, it's about the guys. It's about the, the, the entire program, the coaching staff. It's never going to be about me. Uh, I was just happy for our team, happy for our coaches. This was a team win, and, and I was so excited for all of us. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, playing for him has been awesome. Uh, we all really appreciate him and, you know, love what he's done with the program and everything. So to be able to, uh, you know, get this win is big for everyone, but, you know, we're excited to get it for him. Derek and I are back for the third and final segment of the KSO Sunday Show, which is brought to you by People State Bank and Legacy Insurance. We are inside of Davis Wade Stadium here in Starkville, where K-State won 31 to 24. Derek, segment three, we talk kind of big picture stuff. The Wildcats, of course, 3 0, probably a fringe top 25 team at this point, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. How much, how beneficial is it for this program as they go to recruit, as they go to move forward, to go into this bye week 3 0 off this win? It's the only time, the first time that they've had an extremely positive uh, message to give to recruits, to give to their fan base, at least tangible evidence because you know throughout the offseason there still wasn't one game they had no tangible evidence that they, they had no film to put on hey see this is what we're about now they do and it's three wins two impressive wins against inferior opponents and then a third one in an sec venue where you haven't won in an sec venue since 1982 exactly so it's a huge win there let's talk about the wins some more before we go back and look at what it means going forward Derek, you had big plays from all three units. Of course, offense with a touchdown that won the game to Dalton Schoen, and they had other plays too throughout the game. Special teams, the Malik Knowles return. But to me, it was the defense. They're on the field so much. They gave up a little over 300 yards. They weren't perfect, but I thought for how much they were out there and the positions they were put in, I thought that was the best unit on the field today. Yeah, I thought it was the, the best unit. Uh, they might not have had the play of the game, but they were probably the unit most responsible for this victory, in, in my opinion. They were the most consistent. They got the big plays that put the offense in position to go win the game or the special teams to go win the game game and I really felt like just up and down the roster whoever they put in just kind of rose to the occasion a lot of unsung heroes on that side of the ball when you look at Jordan Mitty when you look at Eli Huggins Darrell Patterson uh, Daniel Green just guys we weren't talking about this time last year making a difference now you talked about the the possession where they had seven or eight reserves on the field uh, not the starters that they had you know in game one that that drive three and out right those guys all played well for K-State. It's something that Chris Kleiman has done intentionally, building that depth for this program uh, from the bottom to top, all at non-conference play for K-State. So now the Wildcats head into this bye week. You'll see Oklahoma State a couple weeks from now. But during this bye week, what will the staff go do? I mean, I don't know exactly what they're going to do, but is this a time we expect the staff has been very active recruiters to get out on the road and talk about what just happened here in Starkville? I would be surprised if they didn't at least get out on the road a little bit. I don't think it'll be extensively like the second bye week, uh, so to speak. But the first one, I think they'll do a little bit of it and maybe more locally. That would make a lot of sense uh, to me, at least a day or two. And maybe not every assistant coach as well, but it's something that they'll do. But I think with the positive momentum they got going. I don't think they'll want to completely depart from Manhattan. I think they'll want some of the focus to already be on the Cowboys from Stillwater. And then part of this by too is a chance to get healthy, of course. Two weeks from now, you go to Oklahoma State. The Cowboys have been very good. I haven't seen the results today or talked about them at all, but that'll be a tough matchup too. How needed is this time now? White Hebert didn't play today. Walter Neal didn't play today. Other guys got nicked up. Is this the perfect time for the first of their two buys? I think it's so. I mean, you get Wyatt Huber back, it'll be a shock to anyone if he wasn't able to play in Stillwater. He'll be available. Jonathan Durham came back to play today, so obviously he's available. And it would be a shock to me at this point if Walter Neal and Cody Fletcher are back to the defense. You know, you know, hopefully there's no off uh, week injuries or practice of any kind, but it should be back to 100% uh, full full energy when it comes to the next game in Stillwater. One more thought on this game before we get closer to wrapping this up. Derek, all, all week or really for all off season, we've talked about how can K-State make up enough ground in 12 months to beat Mississippi State on their home field after what happened last year. And I know it was a 31-10 game, but if you go back and watch the game and look at the stats, it was as much as K-State was dominated at any point last year. How did they do this? How did they make such a difference in 12 months? I know you don't know the answer, or else we would have known it before the game started, but how do you think the Wildcats have made so much progress so quickly? I'd like to hear your answer on this as well, but I'll sure. say for me, it happened on both lines of scrimmage because I thought that's where the biggest difference last year. That When we talked about the talent disparity between the two programs last year, I thought it was 99% of it was on the offensive and defensive lines. Kyle and Hill's great, but he had holes, you know, as big as a semi truck wide to run through last year. He obviously can run breakthrough tackles. He's done that all year. He's in the top 10 in the NCAA breaking tackles. He didn't do that today. So it's defense as a whole, but most 
you know, generally, I think it was the line of scrimmage because Kansas State won the line of scrimmage more than Mississippi State did today. I mean, that's what it was. So if I was going to answer it too, I would just talk kind of a cliche thing, but it's true. Just the general belief this team has in itself. They're more talented than I've probably given them credit for. It's hard to win games like they've won without being a talented football team. So K-State's a talented football team. But it was the belief. There's so many things went wrong today. The two muff punts, of course, the fumble, drop passes on a couple of key instances. A lot went wrong for K-State today to where they could have packed up their bags, gone home, and said, well, we're 2-1, and one. not so bad. We were competitive at Mississippi State because a lot of people thought that would be enough. This team never really thought that. I think that was a difference to me, aside from, like you said, the offensive and defensive lines. They just didn't blink, and especially on the defensive side of the ball. That's going to wrap us up here today from Davis Wade Stadium in Starkville, Mississippi. Grant Flanders, we appreciate your work behind the camera. For Derek Young, for Matt Hall, K-State's 3-0, and now you can tell your friends.